Martin Gore from Depeche Mode. How are you doing, my friend? I am well, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Is How do you prepare yourself for pretty much a full year on the road? Um, lots of panicking, lots of stress. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just packing my wardrobes at the moment. To, you know, I started like two days ago, and I think today is probably the last day I have to finish packing. And it's unbelievable how you you have to think because I'm, the, the wardrobes don't come back home for that whole time. So I've got to think. You know, I've got to make sure I have clothes for like Europe in the winter, <laughs> and also, <laughs> and also for like you know, Florida in the summer. You know, or or Las Vegas in the summer, you know, <laughs> or whatever. You know, it's like, it, it's a, it's quite a, a feat to pack. Well, and you're like a, a fashion aficionado, so like, how much clothes are you packing? Like, you're you're uh, well so... over the the fifty pound limit in a suitcase. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. No, I, we, we get. A, I have a wardrobe, one wardrobe with two hanging rails, and then I've got a separate uh, case with just drawers in it. So wow. hopefully, I mean, I mean, obviously, I don't take everything with me, but you know, I do have to fit in my my stage clothes as well, which that I, I don't have them here. They'll, they'll be added when I get to Los Angeles. Is, is, does it get like mundane being on the road that long? Like, because you're going until the end of December. Um, it really kind of like fluctuates. You know, you you have highs and you have lows, um, and it and not for any particular reason you know just you know some days are good some days are, you know you just wake up and you think god i've still got six months to go <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you know and then you know the next, a day later you you wake up and you're fine you know it's it's it, but you know the concerts themselves are always fun i have to say i enjoy all of the concerts it's just you know some of the the waiting around and the traveling and all that stuff that's not that not fun is there one concert that sticks out in your mind as being the most memorable concert that Pesh Mode has ever played? Uh, I mean, we've had so many over the years. Um, I have to say, and this is this will sound quite disappointing for any North Americans, that I think that the European audiences just really take it up a few notches. Um, yeah, I, I could see that. Yeah, because sometimes even around here, you go to shows and it's like, come get up. Oh, you like, I went to see Elton John a few months ago and people were sitting down. It's like, this is Elton John. Stand up. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, in, in Europe, it's, you know, for a lot of the people there, it seems that we're, we're, we're more than just a music group. We're kind of a cult, you know, and uh, and they're they're happy to be cult members and they're happy that we're their cult leaders. <laughs> yeah, now, now your career in uh, the music industry has spanned decades um how has the music injury in industry changed since you first started out um well, well they they don't make wax cylinders anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're almost we're, we're almost that old you know <laughs> you know, people don't listen to music on gramophones anymore. <laughs> You're being cruel to yourself, Martin. <laughs> I, but I, no, I, obviously it's changed enormously, you know. Um, but the uh, the ironic thing is that uh, we were given a finish date for our record that was like six months before the release because of vinyl. Really? because of getting enough vinyl printed because huh. obviously there are there are only a, a few plants now you know and, and you need to get enough vinyl printed to uh to, to be ready for day one you know oh, so, wow. so that's what that. that's why we we had to finish so early because of vinyl believe so it or kinda, not has that kind of like come around full circle then well yeah i still think it's uh uh you know uh, uh, obviously a much smaller percentage than it used to be but it has obviously got a lot bigger over the last few years. And yeah, I just think it's uh, so funny that we're, we're, we're dictated, uh, our schedule is dictated by vinyl. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. What's the most important thing that you have learned throughout your career? Uh, I think one of the things I like uh, with the way that we work is that we, 
we take each project as a like a kind of one off. You know, we don't ever like think about what we're going to be doing in five years time. You know, we we decide we're going to work on a record and with that and after we finish that record, we go on tour and then we don't think about what we're going to do after that. It's always like a, you know, like a, a, a void after that. And somehow we're still here and we're still making records. And so maybe that's a good a good way to work, you know, not to think too much about, about what you're going to be doing in five years time, because every as we all know now, things are very unpredictable in the world. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, it's funny you say that, too, is because you see bands like, you know, Kiss and Guns N' Roses, Bruce Springsteen, all doing these massive tours without putting out any new music. What are your thoughts on bands who are just like, I'm not going to put out any new music. We're just going to tour our greatest hits. Well, each to their own, I suppose. I think that we enjoy still making music. You know, it's our uh, main passion in life. You know, me and Dave talk about that quite a lot. You know, if we didn't have music, we'd be complete rep reprobates, like, you know, you know, floundering around doing nothing because we don't particularly have, have a passion for anything else. <laughs> <laughs> And what what is the um what is the best advice that you have ever received in your in your musical career? I don't know if it's the best advice necessarily, but I think we got very lucky early on because we, you know, shook hands with Daniel Miller of Mute Records, and Mute Records was a, an independent label. And that was at a time when major labels were chasing us and like offering us large sums of money. And for some reason, we trusted Daniel, who could offer us nothing. Um, and because we did, because we uh, ended up going with Daniel, we were able to develop at our own speed. And uh, you know, he was you know happy to let us do whatever we wanted. And I am pretty sure that, you know, if we'd signed with a major label back then, we would have been dropped by album two, maybe at, or, or at the most album three, because it wasn't what, you know, we'd been doing up to that point. Martin, I will let you run. Yeah, good to talk to you. Thank you. All right, my friend, have a good one. And yes, you too. See you. Bye.